The idea of inheritance is very important. You know, I have a responsibility to look after the environment, look after our territory, so that the next generation, my son and his generation, have what we call inheritance. So that's why it's very important that we also have this process with the federal and provincial government around developing a network of marine protected areas. Now people realize that we have reserves that are part of a federal government mandate, but we have traditional territories that have been ours since time immemorial, and people are starting to understand and respect our jurisdiction over these areas. So as we build the capacity to go forward in managing these areas, marine protected areas has to be part of the solution. It was an important strategy for us anyway, you know, that we would, um, you know, identify areas within our territory uh, where no one else would be accessing it for any commercial or recreational purposes, but only for subsistence purposes that for Haystack people. And that's one of the reasons why we um, like the idea of marine protected areas. We've identified specific areas that are set aside with certain protections that only allow uses for haidas to get in there and harvest specific species. So that's going to be key for, for our future generations to have the opportunity to get out and, and harvest what, what's there set aside for us. Here is going to be our opportunity to implement some of our Indigenous laws, some of our conservation laws to showcase to the world what true conservation is and uh, how to do it in the proper way. It's a government to government to government approach between Canada, BC and First Nations. Well, the MPA network, it's a large coastal area that is connected ecologically. We know species migrate, we know people have relationships back and forth. So the ideal outcome is for people to come together in order to support communities, in order to protect the marine environment, and in order to have sustainable economic development. What is the content of a marine protected area? What does it mean to be a marine protected area? We are the first country, I believe, in the world to actually very explicitly set standards, including things like, in a marine protected area, there will be no oil and gas, there will be no bottom trawling, there will be no dumping, um, there will be no mining. So being very clear about the content of a marine protected area, which is just as important as the amount of space that we are protecting. And this has been co-developed, it will eventually be co-managed. We're trying to tackle this at a scale that is unprecedented and trying to do that in an efficient way that brings the best science to the table, that listens to people who have local and traditional knowledge on the water, that takes into consideration the users of the marine space so that we can create something that works for everyone and also you know, ensures that we're protecting biodiversity for the future, for our children and our grandchildren. So we're helping to co-lead the discussion about should we, shouldn't we, what should go into them, all those kinds of aspects, but making it very clear that this doesn't mean we've agreed to one designation on a map yet. And that's one of the reasons why we're continuing to work very closely with the stakeholder community to make sure that everybody understands why we're making some of these decisions and how we can mitigate some of those impacts and fears that are coming into it. So here we've got the Northern Shelf Bioregion planning space. And you can see we're not starting from scratch. There's a lot of conservation efforts in place. Previous initiatives have begun the process of compiling marine spatial data sets. There was the British Columbia Marine Conservation Analysis, the Marine Planning Partnership. Both of those work to develop the database, the geodatabase of spatial data sets. But it's so important for these pieces to be connected to have somebody looking at the bigger picture and somebody putting together all of the pieces of the puzzle from the economic perspective, the social perspective, and the ecological perspective being the utmost important. And um, we're doing our best to contribute to that. Having a network, having protected areas, that's a good and positive thing. And I'm proud to be a Canadian and be involved in that and all of those good things. At the same time, it's really imperative that the stakeholders' views and their use and their access is properly considered. The MPA network technical team is using a number of different tools to help inform the identification of potential marine protected areas or opportunities to enhance existing marine protected areas. One of the more exciting aspects of the SeaSketch map portal 
is that it puts the planning power in the hands of stakeholders. It lets them make suggestions on how to improve the network, lets them suggest boundary adjustments or changes in management measure that will help minimize the impacts on their sector. We were able to show the fishermen in real time, okay, here is a picture of the zone of culture importance that the local band would like to protect. And they can sort of see, okay, well, yeah, we have to work within those constraints and respect their cultural priorities. For industry to come together and merge all of their fishing expertise, some of them would never have shared that expertise 10 years earlier. Now they're stepping up and showing other people in the room where they make a living. That felt very proprietary, but the cause was greater than the individual, and they stepped up. It'll benefit everyone, you know. I think commercial uh, fisheries, recreational fisheries, the First Nations will benefit from that. But in particular, it gives a place for conservation, and I think that's something that we're uh, all interested in, so. It's been pretty successful at the moment, largely because the governance partners have been so willing to listen. A final network scenario is the ultimate goal, but a perfection is likely impossible. So it will get as far as it, it can in the time frame that um, has been designed, but I fully expect that it will be a dynamic process that will go beyond that. We're living these things, we're driving these discussions now, and we've been able to build these relationships with the federal and provincial government over the years. And so it's put us in an opportune place to take a real run at this.